Hi, my name is Jeremy and I am a part of the 10 Desert Tory campaign that we're currently going with this bike, the Husqvarna 501, that has been here at B&B Off-Road for the last few months with what I can describe as a wizard, Gareth. How are you, my friend? Hi, Alt. Uh, mate, I, I can't thank you enough for what we've got here. It's still, there's still a little bit to do, a little, a couple of things to button up, but the tank and the rotor pack holders uh, and the exhaust are pretty much done. Yeah, well, there was, um, he came to me with the idea of um, mounting some fuel, accessory fuel tanks. We kind of decided that probably wasn't the best way to go, so we ended up with just a one-piece gigantic fuel tank. That's right, well, I think when I in my half-brain kind of ideas was just going to make a, a bigger subframe, something harder that we could then mount packs onto it, but then you've come up with this, mate, it's, it's unbelievable. I think the problem with mountain tanks is you've still got to incorporate, there's a whole heap of area that can be fuel tank that if you bolt and stuff too, you can much better utilise the area and just make it fuel cell. So the goal was somewhere between 30 and 40 litres. I think it came out at 34 and a half. Yeah, that's right. Um, so it's about 50 kilos with the, the tank itself weighing about 14 kilos all up. So uh, it's all two and a half mil marine grade, all TIG welded. Yep. It's um, double seam welded on the inside pretty much everywhere but yep. the wheel well because you can't get in to, to finish it off but um, just got to cross our fingers it should be uh, rigid enough for the the beaten young Jeremy's going to give it I suppose. Well the, the great thing about it is yeah we've, we've got it for a little while to do some testing and, and kind of trial and error. You've done a pressure test on it as well to make sure there's no leaks things like that. You've then added the exhaust to it which is a, which is a really cool feature and uh, which then wraps around to a custom bash plate as well that you've put under there. So. Ideally, it works on paper, which is great, because, I mean, the design process alone was quite, quite vigorous. Yeah, it's probably uh, 40, 50 hours of CAD drawing before we even cut a piece of uh, sheet. The problem with these sort of jobs is you can't do... You haven't got the time. It's, it's a, a concept, a prototype, and a production unit all rolled into one, and you only get one crack at it. Yeah. So. They're always a bit of a risk, those type of jobs. I do seem to get caught with them, but they are a challenge and they are enjoyable. And to be this honest, was Sam, a pretty fun job. Well, Sam was the one that dogged you in, because I kind of messaged pretty Sam, much. and Sam's like, yeah, for sure we'll make you something yeah, like yeah. that. So, but then there's also, the whole rear of the bike was taken off. You didn't 3D scan it as well, so to really help get a, a, a design for it. Yeah, well, these, we had a 3D scanner for about 12 or 18 months now, and it makes these sort of jobs a lot easier because there's less cut in the cardboard, way less measuring, way less scratching the head. You can at least get a bit of a concept going and roughly work out how much fuel it's going to hold, etc., before you even um, you know, cut material. So that certainly helps. And I was pretty happy on paper with how it was looking, so we just went ahead and started cutting and folding and welding, and that's what we come up with. Probably the hardest part of the whole design was incorporating the genuine air boot and intake snorkel so that um, you can just use the genuine filter and the filter changes, there's nothing new. Yep. The seat just pops off, all the electricals are just under the seat. That yep. needs tidying up a little bit, but that's going to be up to Jeremy. Yep. Um, other than that, it's really up to the suspension guy to, to make it all come together in the desert, I suppose, now. No, that's not, we, we, we got it now so we can take it to on point. They're going to they're gonna sort out suspension because obviously there's going to be a few live weights to work with along it, but it'll the, be a challenge. Yeah, well that's it, but the intake, you're right, the intake is in exactly the same location, mm. so how did you kind of manage to make that work? A um, couple of late nights actually, a um, fair bit of cutting with the cardboard because when you get into those sort of details, you nearly just got to work with what you got rather than try and cut it up too much, it's a bit of a, a, a test, and, test and trial type of thing, you just cut bits and fit them in and but uh, once we had the location for the uh, air boot, well, it's just a matter of ad adapting the pieces you're making bit by bit. And um, yeah, there's quite a bit of work in that side of it. Because uh, the last time I was here was a couple of weeks ago. There, you were cutting out a little bit more though for the rear shock. Obviously, you didn't take into account the, the movement of the shock once you load the bike up. Yeah, I knew it was going to be touch and go there. And by the time you add a little bit of thicker material and it, it ends up a little bit, grows a little bit than what you had in mind. and then. Just to be sure with the amount of rock on the on the shock bottle, I didn't want it rubbing a hole. So we, that, that was really the only 
thing we overlooked, and it was only about three or four mil, and it was a pretty quick fix. So. No, you, you couldn't even tell now. Nah. Like it all looks buttoned up. Obviously, the the rear spring isn't in there because we're taking it to on point, so that's going to be fixed up. But the the other cool thing is these rotor pack mounts. Obviously, we needed a bit more range for some of the places we're going. There's no fuel anymore. The design for this was it uh, when I came up with it and told you. What was your initial thoughts? Uh, I knew it was going to be difficult, but. Um, there's not a lot of points to mount it to, that's the yeah. problem. So in the end, we just, rather than try and half-ass it and do it with bits here and bits there, we just welded a couple of brackets to the frame and did how it should be done rather than try and cobble it together, if you like. But I'm pretty happy with how they came up. No, it's good. It's mounted perfect to the chassis. There's, the people who've already picked up, there's a few things on the frame that I'm going to be doing just to stiffen the frame up because there were some cracks in the frame when you when you pulled it apart. It's just come from the desert. There's still Simpson Desert in the bike, so you picked up a few cracks already in yeah, the bike. Yeah, well, it was, this was cracked through here. I'd say that this under load actually straightens and flexes the frame here. Yeah. It was nearly all the way around, so that needs a little bit of attention there yep. and probably some preventative fish plating yeah. on the other side as well. That's what we're going to do. Obviously when we get this home we're going to have the bike stripped down and do a bit more repairs and this isn't the final configuration of the bike but it's really cool to see the bike itself in its kind of raw form from the paperwork and, and, and the photos that Sam yourself sent and then now it's it's here. It's uh, it's absolutely incredible. Yes, well um, I'm pretty glad it's finished, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna do another one for me mate? Nah, like there's no nah. more no more in the, the thing and then the exhaust as well like the exhaust that was an idea that you came up with yourself. I just, I didn't know because I thought we were just going to do the subframe and then tuck the exhaust up. I was kind of imagining something different. What gave you the idea for this exhaust? Uh, well, I knew that you, you want to get the exhaust as far away from the fuel as you can. And I know a lot of the desert rally bikes, they run these drop pipes. And it's really, apart from the drawback that it exposes the pipe to a bit of damage down low, which hopefully is not too much of a problem in the desert. Um, it, it's just a way of getting the pipe out of the way so you, you can get as much fuel in it as you can, I suppose. Yeah, and I've said that it does run along my foot and things like that, people notice that, but you've also made an awesome bash plate that kind of goes down, wraps around, plus a skid plate as well for the rear shock, so it, it kind of, it all incorporates so well and so seamless. Well, that's what we tried to do. Um, it, was a, it was a plan all along. I had it in my head once I decided how I was going to go, I had it in my head yeah. all along, so. Um, yeah, it did come together pretty good in the end. Oh, it's come perfectly, and as I said, the weight is only 50 kilos in the rear with fuel is amazing because that's what a normal bike would have anyway if you if you just had a normal subframe. By the time you put on three or four bladders, you know, you'll, you'll be up at the 50 kilo mark. Yeah, well, I reckon I was pretty happy with the, the dry weight at 13 kilos. Oh, absolutely. I thought it would have been 20, but it came out at 13. But... Yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and to be able to get 34, 35 litres of fuel in the rear, it's uh, amazing. Now the delivery system for the fuel from the rear? All we've done is just with a, just going with a gravity feed. Um, just comes out of the inside of the tank there on some aero fittings. Uh, you've got a one-way valve there and then you've just got a manual tap. Because that is a lot higher than that, Jeremy will have to run this tank down before he opens the valve. Um, I've just plumbed into the to the genuine tank here, so it's just a gravity feed. All he's got to do is remember that when he pulls up and has a bit of a rest, he just wants to park it on a bit of a hill so that this fuel, doesn't matter where he is, is continually draining into that tank and hopefully we'll gobble up all the fuel in there, bar a litre or two, probably. No, and look, that's it. Like People have been asking that about how the fuel is delivering and the question's been asked, why don't I have a mechanical fuel pump and things like that. To be honest, the simple answer is just simplicity. We don't want too many moving parts on the bike. There's already going to be so much going on. And then it's more wiring, more load, more battery. That's yeah, it, yeah, like yeah, the battery's yeah. already going to be, like there's no kickstart on this bike, so we don't want to, I don't want to have to be carrying a second battery to run another fuel pump, things like that. This is gravity fed, pressurized, like once this gets closed up, it'll be a perfect system to do. And you're right, if when I have a, a stop or a feed or a piss, just push the bike on there a bit of an angle and then it will drain in. Uh, no drama at all. Yeah, well it's half inch fuel line, so it'll it'll drain in pretty quick. Oh, absolutely, and uh, the, people are asking, you know, why do I need so much fuel? The fuel is, uh, it's a 10% extra than what I actually need. It's just a safety precaution. We don't know what the what's going to happen out in the desert with the sand conditions and, and even the terrain because of all the rain, so that's all you got to do is get a flat tire and it'll start sucking more fuel. Well, it, it gets too hot or mud or things like that, we just start churning up more uh, more dirt, which then puts an extra load on the bike, so it's always good to have this much fuel on the bike, and it ends up looking pretty cool, man. It looks like a bit of a rocket. 
Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, we haven't come up with a name with the bike yet, mate, so that's definitely something I do. I mean, I'll leave that up to you. Yeah, I know, but people calling it the Hindenburg, which I don't like, it's a bit of a <laughs> cursed name, but... Uh, <laughs> it's no, the... I don't like that one either. <laughs> but the other, the other thing I love about the bike is that even though it looks so massive on the back, it's not any wider than it, than it, than it should be, or longer as well. Like, you manage to keep all the dimensions pretty close to what the original bike is. Yeah, well, I was a bit worried when I first tacked the tank up and was on the ground, I thought, oh, geez, that looks a lot bigger than I thought. And then you put it on the bike, put the seat on, and actually look where it would be if it was a normal subframe with luggage and tanks and all that on it. Kind of occupies the same space. Very much so. Even so, the, these brackets here are for just pannier bags that will uh, will have just spare parts and things like that. So exactly like a, a normal bike um, does, and it's the same width as when I just started. Yeah, yeah. And even with the rotor packs and the and your additional carry saddle bags, it, it's not any wider than than kind of where where a normal bike should be. No, no. Well, uh, well any of the big adventure bikes with a heap of gear on them is going to be wider yep. than this is going to be. And, so you, you you got a bit of an advantage there already. Well, that's it. That's why we chose the 500 platform because it is kind of the light adventure bike. It's able to get, get through the desert, and um, yeah, it's going to be pretty heavy. But at the same time, no more heavy than a, a Tenere or a 690 or something like that. That guys cross the desert with. So, and I think people also need to know that these rotor packs aren't going to be with me the whole way. They're only for a certain section of the of the desert I'm going to be doing, and these tank won't have to be full all the time. There's only certain sections where these these will be full. So, in that way, we can. Uh, kind of balance the bike out pretty well. I'm looking forward to seeing how it performs actually. Yeah, and absolutely. We've got we've got a couple of weeks, of, a couple of months of testing before I actually go. So, yeah, no. It's, this, this, will heal. Heal, this will heal. This will heal. We got the same kind of uh, injury, mate, except uh, mine, uh, mine wasn't chosen. You chose to do yours. But um, it's going to be great to see this thing go and then obviously, you know, bring it back for any changes and, and things like that. I look forward to it. Uh, thank you. Can't thank you enough, my friend. No worries. Thank you. Absolutely awesome.